welcome to the Bible Study Hour. We are happy that you have joined us again this week so that we can continue the beautiful study we started coming from Ephesians chapter 6. Notice that we are closing down on the book of Ephesians just now, and we are happy that to go into this study, we have Pastor James Sunlin and Pastor Alden Mort joining me, Lorna Stevenson, and you are there, no doubt, sharing in all the aspects of the study. We want to thank our sponsors, Easy Deal Auto Sales and Tours Limited, for being there for us, supporting this program at all times. And we thank also those who have participated in other ways to make this a possibility so we can study together. As always, before we open God's word, we invite God's presence to guide us along. And so we ask you now to join us in our opening prayer. Everlasting Father, the great I am, it is a privilege to go into your words, to study your word, and to discover your will for our lives. We ask for your divine Holy Spirit to guide us in this study and help the viewers that even as they watch this program, their hearts will cling to Jesus Christ. Bless us now and bless this program in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. amen. Usually when we're talking about war and fighting and battle, we talk about waging war. Yes. But the discussion and the study for this week has a title which says Waging War peace. I suppose as we go through our discussion, our study, we will see why this element of peace is important to all of this. Paul presents to us in chapter 6 of Ephesians this very special military metaphor. Mm -hmm. And we started this study last week and we are going to go in finer details now as we look more on this armor that we are supposed to put on for this war. Let's take our memory text, which is chapter 6 of Ephesians, and we're looking at verses 16 and 17. It says, In, in all, all circumstances, circumstances take, take up, up the, the shield of faith, faith with, with which, which you can, can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one, one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which, which is the, the Word of, of God. God. Now, there are several parts of the armor that are mentioned in this memory text. So instead of discussing them now in light of the memory text, <laughs> We'll take them one by one as we go through this study. At the beginning of the study, though, it's kind of important that we understand that when Paul speaks and he gives directives, he's not talking to just individuals. I think we can go back at the beginning of the metaphor here. And we can read verses 10 and 11 and see what we are getting there. The word of God says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that he may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Now, this final appeal that Paul is making, what, what makes you think that he is involving the entire church? Well, he's writing a letter to <laughs> believers, and it's not just one person he's writing to, or else he would have perhaps addressed an individual. That's right. He, he, he says, brethren, which mm -hmm. is... It is, it, it is a term used to signify 
the body of believers. And so he's writing to those believers in Ephesus. But those who are in all ages, in all era, wherever they are on the planet, this is a message for all. Why? Because the battle is not a battle for some Jews. The battle is against all persons who profess to believe and accept that Jesus Christ is their Lord. So whatever nationality or whatever part of the globe in whatever time you live, this is a battle that you will have to face. Mm -hmm. So the message is for all inhabitants who accept the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yes. When you think about even this, you know, part of the lesson, you, you, you see a call that Paul is giving not to an individual, but to the church. Because when you're going to war, you know, the, the king always give the call to, you know, to the, to, for other men to come and join in the battle. Mm -hmm. And so the call now is to the Christians, you know, to come. We are going to be fighting against the enemy. And it is about unity you know, to pull the church, to be united against darkness. And that is the call that Paul is making. Thank you very much, gentlemen. And we must realize, too, that, you know, the individual cannot do as the individual pleases. Yes. No. The individual who is a part of the army mm -hmm. must work with the army. Yes. And as you rightly said, the unified focus mm -hmm. and taking commands from the general. Yes. Mm -hmm. And working according to those commands, whether you like it or not, for the general, and we have to do it together. Right. Yes. That's right. So the army is the whole church that we are talking about here now. We, we are going to be looking at the different parts, the different components of the armor that we are supposed to be putting on. So let's put some focus on the belt and the breastplate. What are we getting here now from verse 14 of Ephesians chapter 6? And it says, Stand therefore... Having your lines girdled about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness. There are two things mentioned there truth and righteousness. Mm. Can I hear how these two really fit into the armor for this battle we are fighting? No, I believe that. Uh, Every piece of armor has to have some kind of belt or chain or something to lock it on your body. Because uh, it doesn't just sit on your body like that. There has to be something that holds it in place. And, and Paul is, is making it known that you've got to have your loins girt. For me, I see that as meaning fixed properly. Properly tied or, or buckled or uh, being, being, being placed in a position where it won't fall off. It, it has to be properly put and secure to your body. And he's saying what is most important here is to see to it that truth and righteousness are there. They are going to be very important. You know, Pastor, I like the expression that you use fixed properly. Yes. And that's referring to truth, eh? Yes. So it says to us then that we better know truth. We better know truth. Because if we don't know it, we can't yes. fix it yes. properly. Yes. Eh? Yes. Yes. Because right. we can't fix it according to our notion that's right. of what it should be. Mm -hmm. It has to be fixed according to what it is. Yes. And, and, and may I even go a little further? Yes. Here, truth 
uh, symbolize Jesus. Mm. Jesus says he is truth. The way, the truth and, and the it life. also yes. symbolizes the word of God, which is truth. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it means for me that you can't be a casual follower of Jesus mm -hmm. or you can have a casual understanding and interpretation of truth. Mm -hmm. You have to understand it properly and you have to know Jesus personally, mm -hmm. have a personal relationship yes. with him. Okay. Yes, Pastor. I like this. There's a section in the lesson that mm -hmm. I like and it deals with truth. It says truth is not the believer's own. That's right. It is a gift of God. And, and, and this is very important because truth is not human de designed. Mm -hmm. Because many persons who are saying, I have the truth and I'll do that. Mm -hmm. But truth is given to us by God. All right. And we must understand that. Uh, and also we say, walk in righteousness. Walk in God's way. You can't go wrong when you walk in God's way. And the devil can't defeat you. When you have, when you walk in righteousness. Mm -hmm. And at the beginning of that paragraph that you quoted a yeah. while ago, yes. the ending of it has a statement there that is okay. also yes. very yes. pointed. <laughs> it says that they do not mm -hmm. so much possess God's truth mm -hmm. as God's truth possesses mm -hmm. and protects <laughs> yes. them. Yes, yes. that's yes. right. Right. Hence, we're talking about the armor. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So the truth is there yes. to take hold of us mm -hmm. and to protect us. Yes. Good. We are going through a few more verses in Ephesians chapter 6. For in verse 15, we are going to be hearing something about the shoes, protection yes. for the feet. Now, yes. let's hear it. That's Ephesians chapter 6, verse 15. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. A simple one. Mm -hmm. But there must be a lot of substance in that short verse for us. Yes, yes. It links us back to the title of the study for this week. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are waging peace. Mm -hmm. Now, tell us about the feet and the shoes and the peace. Well, I don't, know if anybody I don't know if it makes sense going to battle without your feet being protected. Yes. Because uh, if, you're, if you are injured in your feet, it, it's going to be very difficult to stand mm -hmm. or to walk or to go on the journey. Um, so it's important to have on the right thing on your feet. And, and this is talking about the, the, the preparation of the gospel of peace, which suggests that the gospel is the foundation of where you're standing on. And we know that the gospel is the good news that Jesus Christ has come to save sinners. So uh, you can't go without the gospel. Everything has to be couched in the whole matter of the gospel. There was a time when, they, when the church... Uh, in the early 4th century to the um, 17th century, um, wage war against people. Mm -hmm. That those who didn't accept what the Catholic Church taught, they were enemies and they were killed. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's no way you could be following what Paul says. He says, peace. Yes. You know, I, I, I like the... Go ahead, Pastor. I was about to ask you a question. No, but go ahead. The question is, it might come into what you have to say as well. Why do you think this preparation for the gospel of peace is put on the feet and not on the head? <laughs> because, and, 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 no, let me just yes, read go Isaac. Ahead. I, Isaac <laughs> is saying, so he's answering that. He says, how beautiful upon the mountain mm -hmm. are the feet of him that bringeth good tithing, that publisheth Peace that bring good tithing of good that publish salvation. And so when you look at you know peace, this this world is is one peace. And you know, I was listening to a program and he's talking about happiness and peace and what you can do to get happiness and peace. But the Bible is assuring us 
that you get that peace in Jesus Christ. Okay. And Jesus said, my peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as this world giveth, I give unto you. So we have the, the gospel of peace and we need to carry it. Because, you know, the devil is when you, de you, you know, you are, put it this way, you are tormented when you have the devil yeah. as your master. You know, life is, is pulling you down. But when you have Christ, you have this joy. Mm -hmm. And even when you are going through suffering, you're still praising God. And that is peace. And when we talk about the shoes, Pastor Sunlin, yeah. and the feet, mm -hmm. yes. doesn't it remind us okay. of the path in yes. which we have to of walk? Yes. Yes. It, it, it has to yes. do with direction too. So wherever yes. we're going, it, 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 it has to be according to God's will. Yes. But I'd like to also indicate that um, the, while we're waging war, mm -hmm. we're waging peace. Yes. That's right. Because man, remember That's that right. we're fighting against the enemy, yes. Mm -hmm. yes. but we're also sharing God's word wonderful truth mm -hmm. to others who are not a part of the satanic forces. Mm -hmm. And even if they're part of the satanic forces, we want to give them the gospel. Yep. Because the ultimate warrior behind all of this is Satan, not mm -hmm. people. So we're fighting against Satan, but we're giving people the gospel, which is to help them to leave from the camp of Satan and to be a part of God's kingdom. So we're reminding them that although we are in war now, we are in battle right now, mm -hmm. this is not how things are going to continue for all times. That's right. What we are heading for is peace. Amen. That is right. The shield, the helmet, and the sword. Let's read verses 16 and 17 again. And it says, Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith he sh shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Okay, tell us a little bit more about all of what is embedded in this section with these three components of the armor. All right, when you look at, you know, these three, you know, instruments, they are very vital even in, the, in real battle. The, the shield, the helmet, and the sword. And if you notice, is that, you know, the, the shield protects. Yes. Um, another part of the, the helmet, it protects your, your head and all that. And the sword, you used to fight. Now, Paul is saying that, you know, for the shield of faith. And um, if you are going to, to able to, to stand, you have to have faith. Because faith is that we don't see, but yet we believe. Um, we hold on to, to Christ no matter what. And, um, and that is very important mm -hmm. in, in, in the Christian warfare. If you don't have faith, then you're not going to believe. <laughs> that I, is. I hear you clearly, sir. <laughs> Pastor Sunlin. No, there's no way that you can fight in this battle, this spiritual battle, without assurance and confidence in your army general. Yes. You've got to trust his yes. words, his directive, and be willing to go forward. So faith is essential because this is strong assurance in God. That's right. The helmet of salvation is, 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 is that... Uh, trust you have because while you have faith you also have to overcome fear so the helmet of salvation is is that perfect confidence and trust you don't have fear of the enemy because you know who is your leader and the word of god as the sword is what you're going to use to um to throw at the enemy so rather than throwing all kind of cursing and swearing you're throwing at the enemy the word of God, which uh, the Bible says will divide asunder, joint and marrow. Powerful. So uh, as we go through all of this, we see how we are taking care here of all the different protective 
sections mm -hmm. for the body itself, but it's also taking care of the protection that is offered by certain weapons. That's right, yes. So if it's not something you're wearing on the body mm -hmm. to protect the body, it's something that you're using away from the body or outside mm -hmm. to do the actual fighting. So these are, Paul is using these as analogies. Yes. You know, saying that in all of this warfare, make sure you have all of these things, which are spiritual arsenals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, remember he says that the, the, the warfare is not, or, or, it's not carnal. Or, it's not a carnal one, mm -hmm. right? So it, it, these are spiritual things that we must have in this battle against the enemy. And and Go ahead, me, sir. Let me say that. You see, the, the word of God, the word, the sword, mm -hmm. is very important because, you know, David put it, the, thy word have I hidden in my heart yes. that I will not sin against thee. And so even as we endeavor to do God's will, mm -hmm. we must be, we must also, and that's a part of God's will, we must endeavor to walk in the word. And not only that, but we will endeavor to share the word mm -hmm. so that others will get to know God. And, you know, when you, when, you, when you hear God's word, when you listen to God, you are going to do something. It, as you said, it's caught. Yes. You're going to drop off and you go, you're going to do some things that you used to do. You're not going to do them no more because right. of the word. So the word of God is very important. Well, I'm glad you have emphasized that point so much because I was just about to point out it's interesting yeah. that Paul is saying here as he describes the armor, mm -hmm. notice how he started that first part. It says, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. <laughs> and then he lists other parts of mm -hmm. the armor coming down. And to the very end, as if he didn't say enough about truth, <laughs> He talks here about the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Right. So, you know, he's, he is putting much emphasis there mm -hmm. on the word. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And P Paul wants us to understand, as he wanted the Ephesian church to understand, yes. that the battle is still going on and whatever it is that's happening, mm -hmm. We must understand that whether we are lazy or we are active, mm -hmm. we are in the fight. Yes, right. And we are soldiers together mm -hmm. in the army. That's right. And therefore, we must put on the whole armor of God. Of God. Not piece of it, mm -hmm. not part of it, not the part that we like, mm -hmm. but the That's whole right. armor. That's right. And he closes off. His instructions here. You know, you would think that a person or persons ready for fight for, battle for, war, would be confident to say, yes, I'm ready now, so I'm on my way. <laughs> but he backs up what he's saying in verse 18. <laughs> Let's see what Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18 has to say for us. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching there unto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. How can you further emphasize the importance of verse 18 in all of this? We can't overemphasize. Prayer is essential. Prayer is communicating with God and communing with God, having fellowship. Mm -hmm. And he is our battle and, and a general or army general or captain. Without constantly hearing from your general and communicating with your general, you won't know exactly what to do, where to turn, when to stop, when to move Amen. forward. And so prayer, Paul is saying praying always, never stop communicating with the Lord because he knows exactly what next to be done and where next to turn. Thank you. I was watching yes. the world championship and the athletes, when they attempt something and sometimes they fail, 
they will go one side and they will consult with the coach mm -hmm. and say how to do it, how to get it right, <laughs> what I need to do. Mm -hmm. Do you think that I need to do this and thing? And then the coach would advise them. And some of them said, hey, I will have to talk to my coach if I must do this, I do that mm -hmm. and all that. And so communication to, as you said, to the general yeah. is very important if we are going to succeed. Mm -hmm. And if you notice, Paul did not use this as, an, as a part, as, as a, the, 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 the weaponry, but he, he put it on there to show the importance of prayer. And prayer for us is life. Because guess what? As the lesson said last week, we are in a spiritual warfare. Mm -hmm. And we have to talk to the general. We have to talk to our captain. We have to talk to our God. And so he will tell us what to do, how to do it, and when to do it, and all that. So prayer is very important. So the prayer is like the combining <laughs> element yes. right. with all of the different parts mm, of right. the armor. Yes. Yeah. It cements all of the parts yes. together. Well, and, and it shows, as the lesson says, as if the church is to be successful in its battle mm. against the powers of evil, that's right. It will need to practice dependence mm. on God yeah. through spiritual inspired prayer. Yes, and in this matter of praying and the importance of prayer, some other references are made in our outline, our study outline. Yeah. In Luke, there is an incident there where Jesus talks about this woman, mm -hmm. and the emphasis there is persistence. Persistence, yes. that's right. In Philippians chapter 4, we talk there about the pleadings, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the intercessions that's that right. must go on. That's right. And in Colossians and Thessalonians, we are talking about doing this thing on a non-stop yeah, basis non -stop. Yeah, that's right. with no thanksgiving. Yes. Mm -hmm. So every time you win a battle one day, yes. remember yes. to give thanks that's because right. the war is still going on. That's right. The war yes. isn't over yet, no, no, but at no. least you have won a battle. Yes. So remember to give thanks. Gentlemen, very quickly, your closing thoughts on this particular study that we have had for this week. We are engaged in a battle and we must remember that we are not any match to the enemy. Mm -hmm. We are going to have to learn to focus, be aware, know who is our captain, who is Jesus, and constantly depend on him. Battle, the battle is going to be won because of our dependence and our willingness to follow the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Now, this lesson is a beautiful lesson and it's telling us that as a church, we need to pull together. You see, when we, we are strong, when we are united, and as we are united, we must also remember that we need to have on the armor of God because um, in our u united force, we need the sword, we need a helmet, we need everything. Because guess what? We are going in Christ to win this battle. But it's not us, but it's Christ in us. Amen. And I, I can close up by referring to the song that we sometimes love to sing, although some of our modern people don't know this song. Mm -hmm. I'm on the battlefield <laughs> for my Lord. <laughs> Yes. And I promise him that I will serve him till I die. We are all on the battlefield for the Lord, unless, viewers, you really have decided that you don't want the Lord to be your general. You want to be on the battlefield for the other general. Mm -hmm. But we implore you. Paul has assured us, and throughout Scripture we are assured that it's Christ the general who will win the war. So stay on his side is the appeal that Paul is making to us and the appeal that we are making to all of us as well. We want to give thanks to all those who have made it possible for us to reach you this week. And we want to say, thank you, Lord, for the wonderful lessons from your word. Join us just now for our closing prayer. Oh God and our Father in heaven, thank you that you are our captain. Thank you 
for making us more aware of what we need to do and how we ought to be properly armored for this spiritual warfare. We pray that you will be with our viewers, that each one will recognize that you are the captain and you always lead in victorious battles. May all of us, Lord, be so connected to you securely and be willing to follow you continually. Give us victory, Lord, not just now, but for the rest of our lives. And may the privilege be ours to enter victoriously through the gates into your kingdom. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.